Good morning, my beloved. Just a little bit different than we had last week at the same time. A little bit. And uh, a lot to be grateful for, for this past week and certainly this week also. This Sunday, the Sunday after Ascension, and the Sunday before we celebrate Pentecost next week, this is a, a unique time, and every year at this particular, on this particular Sunday, I try to put myself always try to put myself in where Holy Scripture, when Scripture was first written, to appreciate it, we need to be able, or try to be able, to put ourselves in, in that time and what was going on in the minds of the church, the people, at this particular time when it was being written out the first time, as well as what was going on in the mind of the person who wrote it because it helps give a perspective it helps us get into the noima the Greek word is into the mindset of what is being said not only what we're hearing not what we're reading and hearing but also what was going on in the person's heart what was going on in the heart of the people while all of this was taking place this particular Sunday, very often, I think back, I'm going to sound really weird, but I think back of an orphan church, an orphan church, because 40 days ago, excuse me, 40 days ago, of course, Christ was crucified and resurrected. And still a lot of commotion, still a lot of anxiety, still a lot of angst going on for the people who weren't one of the ones who saw him or put their hands in his side. But they had heard about it. They had heard the rumors. So here it was, the, it was a few days ago, we celebrated the 40 days before Christ ascended into heaven as he told us he would. And there was a lot of people there, but again, not everybody. But even the ones that were there, and maybe especially those, he told them when he was ascending to be in heaven, that we be with his Father, which is, again, what he said from the beginning. He said, I'm going to send you something else, a comforter, the Holy Spirit, to help you continue the work that we have begun and Christ arose. Now, what is going on in the minds of those people, those humans that are left behind? They saw all of this, this tremendous, unbelievable, literally, unbelievable things going on. And now, this person who came back from the dead is now up in heaven. So it's not unusual for them to them to have been thinking, okay, uh, now what? They're waiting. They're waiting, anticipating. What is going on? What's next? We're orphans. He's up there now, and we're here by ourselves. I'm going to share a personal thought with you and kind of where I periodically go. As a parent, I look for to protect, to guide, to nurture, 
my children, our children, and I can and I do will do anything I possibly can. And I am not for my children, for our children. And I know that I'm not any different than any other parent. For those of you that are not there yet, you're in for a ride. You're in for an adventure. You know, the roller coaster, very applicable here. Sometimes up here, sometimes down here. The idea. Each, we have four children, and I can remember the day and the moment when each one of our children, starting with our daughter, and then with each one of our three boys, I can remember looking out our house when that first one, the daughter, and then in their turn, each of the boys, when each one was getting in the car by herself or by himself, got in the car, started it up, and drove out the driveway. And I remember thinking, dear God, the prayers that I had not said before since the time they were born, but here there are, there are 15 and a half, close to 16 years old, they'd just gotten a permit and are just driving out by each one by, him, by herself, by himself, the prayers that followed each one of those children were just, I couldn't stop because I couldn't stop worrying. I couldn't stop being anxious. I couldn't stop thinking, dear God, please protect this child. I'm not there now to protect my child. That is also the same moment that I can remember very well that I felt that I lost any influence, any amount of opportunity to, to help my child in times of need because that child now with that driving off at that moment put on wings started flying away from me, from the mother, and the angst, and I can tell you still to this day, I still, when they come and visit, and now, I mean, it's been a few years since then, but I see each one driving off in his or her car with now his or her family and it reminds me every single time of the one time that that child left for the first time from my home and my heart was just <sighs> now I don't get quite as panicky but the prayers I promise you still continue here they are this was you know 30 40 years later and it's still there. Prayers for safety. Prayers to keep them whole. To keep them, to keep them strong. To help them please not fall under the influence of something or someone that can cause them harm. Please, dear God, please protect them. In some way, I think that there was some feeling going on when this gospel lesson or the reading that we heard had something like that. Now Christ, I'm sure, had a, because he's Christ, had a, had a bit of a different concept, but the people that were left behind, where they were going, looking around, what's going on, what is next? Bear with me here. Today, 
well, actually tomorrow, is also a very important day, a memorial day, for all of us to remember our loved ones who sacrificed the ultimate sacrifice, who gave their lives for what? The freedom that you and I have up to and including this present day. That most precious, most awesome, most wonderful of gifts next to life, that is the most awesome gift that we have, given by God Himself. But it also demanded and demands, present tense, that we do everything we can to protect it. And that sometimes means some of us having to give the, the absolute, ultimate sacrifice, a life. The faith that we received is the most precious thing. Life, along with that faith, along with that free will, all of these things are starting to come together now. And people before us gave their lives so that you and I can sit in here today, May the 28th, 2023, and worship without fear of someone coming in and dragging us off and giving up our freedom. Don't forget those people, and these included the martyrs that we see up here on the Iconostasio. That's why they're there, to remind us that they are with us. This is also the Sunday where we commemorate the 318 fathers at the first ecumenical council in the year 325 in Nicaea. Oh, are you kidding me? That was 1,800 years ago? And what's the big deal now? Well, let's ask the same question. What was the big deal back in 1776 when a group of people who were, in fact, for freedom, the one that we still have today. Those people that came together and put their names on the dotted line and put their own lives, the lives of their families and the lives of everyone they held dear and put their own fortune, whatever it was, what each one had in his pocket or a vast fortune, whatever the case, they put it all on the line for freedom. These 318 church fathers set up boundaries that are still guiding us to this very day. And I hope and pray to God that we do remember them because they were also the, our church fathers, just like the 19, uh, 1776, the, church, the American church fathers, American, excuse me, the American fathers that set our country up on the side of the ocean and started to let it go so that we could thrive, so that we could live as independent, free human beings. They were doing the same thing in the year 325. They were doing the same thing then and the same angst and the same worry. What am I getting at? What's all of this for? What's this about? My beloved, if we think, if we think, okay, I'm here in church today and that's great and that's wonderful. But if I think that I've done my job, if I think I've completed my job, that I've accomplished something big, I have, I'm here, but there's so much more that do, so much more that we have to accomplish, so much more that we have to, to complete. Our life on this earth doesn't stop when we've accomplished one particular thing. It still is waiting for us to take the next step. There's a very important word in our theology. The word is theosis, T-H-E-O-S-I-S. -E that means to be like God. And it means that every step that I take on this earth, while I'm still breathing on this earth, is giving me an opportunity 
to take one more step, just like my child, our children, were going off, driving off in the driveway and, oh no, many a sleepless nights that we'd be waiting for them to come back, many a sleepless night that we're waiting a day wondering what's going on, what's happening, what's going on in his or her life, etc. It all goes on still. It doesn't stop. But then the prayers don't stop either. We're supposed to be doing everything we can all the time to ask God to help us. We need to stay focused on our faith in God. We don't have to look too far, unfortunately, in today's world. We don't have to look too far to see what's going on what is trying to be taken away from us, and that is including this right to pray to God the way we want to pray to God. God gave you, me, us, we've heard this so many times before, a soul that is going to exist forever, and he gave also, when he gave you and me a soul, he gave you and me one more precious gift, free will. That free will determines whether my soul, I determine whether that soul is going to be near God or away from God. I had to let go of my children, as difficult as it was and is for me to let go. But they have to learn how to live their life too. Because I, I pray all the time what's called the prayer of parents. I am asking God, please, protect them. And if I can't be there, you be there. You be there and protect these children. But I have to do whatever I can, as long as I have them, I have to do whatever I can to build up some kind of foundation for them and with them. I can't be with my child every day of his life on this earth. I can sure pray for him, and I will not ever stop. But I hope at the same time I have to allow my child, our children, the opportunity to go out there and to make their mark and to live their life, hoping that I gave them enough of a foundation to be able to do what they have to do. It does not stop. A few weeks ago we talked about this in a little bit more detail during a sermon. And we talked about how important it is for us to be remembering to bring our children here for as long as we can because there will be a time it ain't going to happen no more. Each one has his or her own opportunity to make a decision. We live in a world that our children are trying to be taken from us. Don't ever doubt that. Don't ever. If you do, you have fallen, you have failed to protect your child as best you can. Everybody out there is trying to take your child away from you, from me. Family, marriage, and church are in very precarious situation. Be careful. Please be careful. And let's do whatever we can, whatever it is that we can do, to protect that. We thank those souls who gave the ultimate sacrifice as we commemorate them this weekend, tomorrow, Memorial Day. We thank those souls from the year 325 when they put together what we today are still enjoying and living. We appreciate 
those fathers and mothers of the American Revolution that put their lives on the line. And please, let's also remember each other, pray for each other, that we don't step away from what they did not so that we could be here today, so that we can give our grandchildren and great-grandchildren at least something of what we received. Don't give up. As difficult as it is, don't give up. So we're orphans for a little bit because next Sunday we're also celebrating Pentecost. Doesn't mean that everything is going to be okay. All it means is God is continuing to give us the weapons and the armor, the faith that we need to fight to continue to fight for our lives, our faith on this earth. Thank you for your patience. And continue, please, in your prayers for all of us. Amen.